hello guys welcome back to my youtube channel my name is tina if you're new here i make videos about medical school and life as a foreigner in china so consider subscribing in today's video i'm going to be answering some questions that you guys asked me i made a post on instagram asking you guys to send me questions about living in china especially if you're coming to china for the first time what would you like to know so in this video i'm going to be answering all those questions so if it helps you in any way please give this video a thumbs up share this video and subscribe so let's begin the first question is what is the best vpn to use well if you're coming to china you already know that you need a vpn because so many sites are blocked in china so all google related apps google related sites we have facebook snapchat instagram everything it's all blocked so you need a vpn in order to access all these sites so there are different vpns in the app store if you use an android phone you can just go to play store and download as much vpns as possible and if you use an apple an iphone you can also go to the app store and download as much vpns as possible and i say this because when you come to china most people want to use the free vpns and then you realize one vpn is not working as good and then you have to switch to another and then maybe that may not be working as good and then you have to switch or sometimes you know some will work and some won't work the popular ones I know for Android is Siphon and Super VPN, and I'm sure there are others in the Play Store, but download as much as possible. For iPhones, common ones are BetterNet, Hexatech. I use Green VPN and I use um, VPN Shield, but these two VPNs are okay you can get them free but i use the paid version it's very affordable it's about five dollars a month the green vpn works on my iphone alone and the hotspot shield i use it for both my laptop my phone i it allows me to use five different devices so that's the first question the next question is will i need to open a bank account in china or can i use a dollar mastercard there well you can use a dollar mastercard here but take note that there are going to be bank charges for every withdrawal as a foreigner in china you're expected to have a bank account especially if you're coming here for school everyone needs to have a bank account because there are going to be some transactions with between you and your school so it's expected for you to have a bank account and for you to receive money from the banks you also need to have a bank account for certain banks so even if you use your, your dollar mastercard you still have to have a chinese bank account and it's very easy to open so you won't have much problems with that which are the best and affordable universities for postgraduate degrees in medicine well first of all i have always told you guys there are about 45 universities that are in the list of medical universities accredited by the Ministry of Education in China and in those universities you can just pick any school you want from there each school has their different school fees and different prices I can't really say but if you want more information about that you have to contact me personally either through my Instagram or send me an email and then you can go in details about the school fees of each of these schools and which is actually the best and i'll give you all the information you need to know about admissions in china and studying in china hi tina i would just love to know how the studies are and what to actually put in mind for my first exam okay so always know this the first semester is very chill and very relaxed. You do basic courses, you do physics, you do chemistry, you do Chinese and what other course? Maybe introduction to China. These are just like basic courses. For me, these were the courses I did in my first semester. Although the curriculum has changed a bit in my school, there are some new courses. But they are basic courses and for your first exam, you don't need to be worried. The thing you need to worry the most about is your Chinese. So if you're not good in learning a language, you just need to focus on learning 
Chinese for your first semester. The physics is just basic, same as calculus. It's nothing to worry about. Just use your first semester to settle into China, to relax and to adapt to the whole situation. Then from your second semester, you start going into more medical related topics like anatomy, cell biology, biochemistry and so forth. What do you think about doing internship in China? Is it beneficial? Well, the way the Chinese system is, if you're interested in studying, China offers you every resource possible. You get teachers that are willing to teach you, but this is only if you're interested. So most, so if you really want to learn during your internship in China, you have to be willing to push yourself because no one is going to drag you to go to the hospital. As much as you know, you have your logbook to be signed and you have um, departments you're expected to rotate, but no one is going to come force you and say you have to learn this. It's not going to be like that. That's why most people decide to go back to their home countries, which is actually more strict. But in China, it's not more strict. And if you say, is it beneficial? Well, it depends. If you're able to do your internship in the country where you plan to work after medical school, then I strongly advise you do that. But if not, then you can do it in China and take advantage of the time you have. It's not as stressful as doing it back home, but it gives you enough time for you to study and catch up on a lot of schoolwork and prepare for any exams that you want to write and also learn at the same time by going to the hospital. So that's what I have to say on that issue. How are the foods over there? So if you watch my previous videos, guys, I post food that I buy. Sometimes when I go to the restaurant or in the school cafeteria, I have so many videos showing you the food from our cafeteria and how much it costs. You can also go watch my video about the cost of living in China as a student. I'm going to leave it up here for you guys to go check it out. That video is very detailed. All of you watching this video right now should go watch the video about cost of living in China. It talks about the expenses, transportation, feeding, and everything that you need to know. What about religions there? Well, religions in China, I won't really talk, talk about the religions, but I'll say if you're a Christian, there are churches here, there are Chinese churches, and there are international christian fellowships where students gather and you know, they, you know we have formed a church here and for muslims i know there is a mosque which muslims go to every friday they also celebrate eid there but religion as a whole in china and you being a foreigner is not so it's not really a thing foreigners are not really allowed to have gatherings like religious gatherings or cultural gatherings as you know china is a communist country but then you can go to church and you can go to the mosque or i don't know about other religions but these are the two religions i am aware of next question after graduating medicine in china can we work there and what are the requirements first of all you guys already know about the chinese population the china chinese population is so large they have enough manpower to okay they have enough people to work here so the chances of a foreigner working here is like zero to none first of all you need to write the medical licensing exam which is in chinese language and then you need to find a hospital that actually wants you to work with them they actually choose their people over yours and they already have a lot of people to work there so again because of language barrier it's also going to be a problem and then no job opportunities for foreigners here so if you're considering working in china i would say you should find somewhere else or maybe if you don't if you don't want to practice medicine you can maybe get a teaching job look for a school that will be able to employ you and give you a work visa but medicine and practicing as a doctor in china the chances are slim to none and i don't i don't really recommend 
when let when the lectures for mbbs in china usually begin what month and what date there's no particular date but as a new student lectures begin in october usually on your jw202 which is your visa application document you're given a deadline so on that that deadline means you should be in school before then so every student has their particular deadline every school has their deadline but for the autumn admission october and for the spring admission it's in april okay guys those are the questions i got thank you guys for sending in your questions i hope i was able to answer it and answer it very well because i did my best i have so many videos talking about things you should know before coming to china so i advise you go check out all those videos i have done so many q a's about this topic some of these things i've already discussed them before and i also show you guys on my vlogs so please go watch my previous videos they are very educative and you would get a better insight about life in china and studying in china thanks for watching guys and i'll see you in my next video bye bye